My name is Anthony Costa. I'm the Dean of Students at Greenwood College School in Toronto, Ontario. Um, I had the opportunity today to present at the Insights Conference uh, put on by the Learning Bar. Uh, I, I think, you know, what I really want people to take away from the presentation is that um, it's very important to think about data-driven decisions and how we can use feedback to identify gaps in what we're doing between our end goal and, and the reality that we live in. You know, um, throughout the presentation, I, I really hope to, to show one way that, that our school was doing that um, through the identification of, of a discrepancy between how students uh, identify with their own culture. You know, so um, if there's anything that, that a take-home message I'd like to present, it's that, you know, please uh, use what works best for you. This is one way to look at the data, not the way. And, uh, and I hope that there's something you can take away from it that's useful for you. Thank you. In essence, what we're talking about here, you know, when we do get that feedback, um, I've put it on the screen here, like, like so what, right? What, what are we doing with it? What's next? And, and another way to frame that for me and something that I think about quite often with the people I work with is, is what is our vision? You know, what, what is it that we want to be doing? Where are we going? Um, and what's that ideal uh, place we want to get to? You know, so if we think about that vision, and I challenge you now to think about your own vision and whatever work it is you're doing, you know, um, think about that and then think about the reality. <laughs> you know, so when I think about the vision of where we want to go, um, I'll talk about this a little, bit for, a little bit down the road here, but um, in essence to this particular indicator, we're looking at creating culturally competent individuals who graduate from Greenwood and they go out into the world and they have a set of skills that, that they're able to be empathetic and, and work with people of a varying range of experiences and appreciate, you know. When I think about the reality, um, we're not there yet, right? And somewhere between those two are the gaps, you know, and, and we love gaps, you know. Gaps are where we grow and that's what this feedback does for us, you know. It, it points out those gaps, right? So. Um, it offers this opportunity to, to delve in a little bit deeper, and I hope today uh, I, I, can, I can show you one example of way that we've, we've engaged with the feedback from the R School survey. What you see in front of you here is, is data that we collected in, in December 2021, and it says 2022 there because that's when we started to engage with it in January 2022. There's a number of indicators, as, as everyone can be aware. I don't know if the breadth at which people have engaged with the R School uh, process, but there's great, great feedback that can be garnished here, garnered. Um, and the one that we're looking at today is, is cultural awareness, both the cultural awareness of our students that are within their own culture, and then cultural awareness of, of others. Here's the actual data that we received in uh, December 2021. And if you're like me, you kind of notice a big discrepancy here. <laughs> So if, if you look on the, the top right there, the culture, cultural awareness of our students within their own culture, they're identifying that, uh, and I should qualify what this means. So it means students who have an understanding of the belief, attitudes, and behaviors of their own cultures. Only 49% of our students indicate that they have an understanding of that, right? And that's quite low. However, you know, when we look at students who have an understanding of the belief and attitudes and behaviors of those from other cultures, they're going, yeah, 81% 81 of us, we know, but all kinds of other cultures. Huh, that is a big gap, right? That's a big discrepancy there. So we wanted to delve into this. What was observed with this data, right? And, and when I say, what did we consider? This is a small group of uh, advisors and our director, uh, our director of equity, inclusion, and outreach, and myself were looking at some things and we tried to identify, right? So the first thing I've already mentioned, there's a large discrepancy between the perceptions, uh, understanding of other cultures when compared to their own culture, okay? We asked a couple questions after this. Why is this occurring, you know? So what we did do was we started to brainstorm, you know? Do our students actually see their identifi identified culture represented in the work that we're doing in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion? And this is challenging too for us for, uh, I'll get into this later, challenging, but, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> and then the other question is, uh, do our students recognize when work is done that actually does relate to their culture? You know, so are they able to identify when this stuff is happening? And the third question, uh, do students have a deep understanding of their own culture? And how can we sort of help them if they don't? 
The third question, and I, I really bolded the words, um, what can we try to do? You know, I, I mean, as Terry Fox says, right, uh, dreams come true when people try, <laughs> so we need to try. Um, and what can we try to do to help students understand who they are more effectively? So in other words, how does this information help us uh, inform our actions forward? So what? What's next, right? So we looked at what we were doing with our DEI program, and this, this graphic here is from a model that's it's a little bit dated, but we've, we've engaged with it in a, a number of ways, and it's, it's a modified version of this. And it comes from the process of, uh, sorry, it's a process model of intercultural competence from Dearden in 2006. So like I said, it's, it's a dated model, but we've been, what we think is quite innovative with it throughout, throughout the years. So um, what we were doing, you know, there's our vision listed on the top to create culturally competent individuals upon leaving Greenwood. And when I say we're, you know, this is uh, when we came back essentially into the building after uh, COVID being online for a little bit of time. So 2020 and 2021. There's a few words within this model that we wanted to kind of point out that we really latched on to, right? So in the first step here, when we're trying to create these culturally competent individuals, the word respect, openness, curiosity, and, and discovery are, are things that we really thought were paramount in terms of approaching this, right? And then you see, like, when you're working with an individual, you move to this next session of, of knowledge and comprehension, okay? And then what we really like there is, is cultural self-awareness, deep cultural knowledge, uh, and so on. And then, and then you move to this internal outcome, right? And what we really uh, loved there was the ethno-relative view, okay? So we thought, yeah, let's work with this. Let's see what we can do. Let's, let's engage with this model and, and hope that there's some, some real growth and some change for students. So what, what was happening is that there are focused lessons being created by our, our DEI committee. And our DEI committee consists of students as well as staff. And, and what they're doing is um, creating sessions around days of significance, around theme weeks, um, various other important um, events that, that refer to different cultural aspects at our school, okay, and in our society. Those are, those are delivered through our advisor program, and at Greenwood there are, you know, there are 10 to 15 students who are assigned an advisor throughout the school, and, and they meet uh, several times a week, you know, so we have these, in essence, these mini lessons being created, right? Um, content is delivered that, you know, usually refers to, uh, Information, historical significance, teaching about other cultures, you know, a great example, uh, Orange Shirt Day is, is one where we're, to, we're teaching about why that's happening, you know. And then there's a discussion afterwards that sort of occurs, right, within that small group. And those small groups we thought was the best way to approach this because there is quite a bit of uh, trust built within the relationship of the advisor and our students, you know. Um, and so we we perceive that to be the safest place for students to engage in a really authentic and meaningful way. You know, if I'm being honest, uh, what, what we found and what we, student uh, feedback from this is, is this approach actually felt to be a little bit performative, you know? And so we heard that feedback in 2021 and in 2020, and we're like, all right, so, um, thank you, that is a gap, right? And, and you've helped us think about how we can move the needle forward towards a better system, okay? So, what did we do with this? Okay, so, so there's, in spring of, uh, of 2021, moving forward uh, into 2022, we met with a variety of people, staff, students, varying age, Varying ages, uh, and, and and we pose some some questions around the results here around this this gap. Okay, so one of the questions there, um, very simply put, why do you think that this um, this discrepancy exists? You know, so we have this this statistical data, but now we're also trying to collect some anecdotal data from from students as well as from staff. You know, and then the second question we asked in these in these groups, and we met several times, was. What ideas do we have that we can generate to try and improve our results uh, in our students' understanding of their own culture? And so this is where, this is where our students identified that, uh, you know, um, it feels a bit performative to do it this way. But was, all, but was also really telling to us is that students 
um, at our school, uh, and, and we're very aware of this, is the challenge for us, right? Our, our population is quite homogeneous um, visibly, right? And so students said, you know, we don't have a ton of cultural difference in our experiences, you know, and so that's a challenge for us to in, engage, you know, and that's a very authentic piece of feedback and we are working really hard to, to close that gap. And the other piece of information they gave us was, we know we have experiences as students, we know we do. We really struggle with being able to relate the understanding of their own cultural identity um, with what's being taught. How does my experience connect and is my experience even, even cultural in any way, right? So there's some deep thought happening there and, and it was really um, interesting to hear students talk about that. When we met with staff, a couple of things came up. Again, the point around our, our, our population demographic being quite visibly um, homogeneous. Um, you know, not to say it's completely homogeneous, but, but again, uh, we're, we're vastly um, a white population and we're working to improve that. But what, what staff also uh, ind indicated to us was that they don't necessarily always feel qualified or, or knowledgeable enough to approach different cultural aspects, different cultural situations that occur um, in real time. You know, they're not necessarily equipped to manage the questions that come forward, right? And that's a challenge too, and that's a gap that we can work on. Um, so, where did we go? Looking back to our model, you know, we, we did some, uh, some reflective work and we thought about this again, and, and essentially, what we thought was, okay, you know, this, is, this was our answer to question two and three from the previous slide. And question two, in essence, was, you know, what's occurring at our school? And question three was, what can we try to do to help it, help fix this or, like, move the needle towards, like, a better solution? So when we looked at this model that we've been sort of creative with, we, we really latched onto the ethno-relative view and the empathy piece. Okay, so, you know, what, what we did essentially moving in towards this year and the end of last year was we switched these two steps, okay? So the internal outcome was a way that we started to frame the lessons, okay? So a way that we started to approach these very um, potentially charged situations and issues um, differently, right? So what we really tried to do, again, was focus, you know, some lessons with our DEI committee both staff and students, and the themes there that were presented were no longer around like the historical significance, no longer around um, um, the informational pieces, but rather positionality and intersectionality. So the first two there are, are, were our first sort of uh, step towards that, that vision being met. And the next three, anti-racism, anti-oppression, and social justice, that's next for us. That's where we're, we're going to next, right? So, this year, we've really been focusing on students' uh, positionality and intersectionality, and that's a way that we've been able to kind of uh, approach students, despite a, a visible cultural difference at our school. You know, every individual can value their experience, can value their positionality, and, and learn about their intersectionality in order to approach a situation differently and be able to engage with it in a personal way, right? Again, like that connection with their own culture was what was the gap, where the gap was, right? So we're trying to um, close that, okay? Uh, the other thing that we wanted to really do, you know, you don't wanna throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? So we had this system, uh, we didn't wanna be too reactive and throw the entire thing out, right? So we know that one year of data is not necessarily, um, you know, five years of data and, and, and can't necessarily qualify as a trend. So we wanted to make a, a bit of a nudge here in, in a direction that we could continue to try to work within the system that we're using, but also um, shift it, okay? So what does this look like at Greenwood this year? All right, so like we said, there's, it's still running through the same sort of system, right? With our advisors, um, we have these lessons, this approach, um, and the lessons very much work on that positionality, intersectionality piece, right? So the small group leader, teacher-led discussions, collaborative mini lessons are, are created, uh, comprised of staff and students. We did hear staff, right? So staff did say, 
we don't necessarily feel comfortable, not everyone. So what we've done is we've partnered staff. You know, so now in these sessions, there are two staff in each one. And there are, there's a, a level that they've indicated um, of at least somewhat expertise, right? So, you know, we talk about this often, you know, the way that, um, as I mentioned earlier, Rachel Brown Swain, the way that she would present one of these, these mini lessons, very different than one of our grade seven math teachers, you know, who is a first year teacher, right? And that's not a comment against that teacher. That's simply speaking to the range of experiences, um, the depth of knowledge, the way that we can navigate difficult conversations. And that takes experience, it takes time, that's a skill set to build, right? So by partnering, partnering a, a staff who, who believes that they have some, some knowledge and some, some savvy in this, uh, in this form, we're helping to train our staff to feel more comfortable in these situations too and be able to address situations in the moment when they come up, which is really important to do. You know. Um, yeah. So again, I, I just wanted to point out too, like the, the definitions here of positionality as well as intersectionality, they're listed there just in case people were not necessarily aware of what those were. And then our goal, again, to, through this method, we're trying to have students understand what they bring from their own past experiences, their culture, their set of beliefs into the learning environment in the hopes of, of developing that cultural competence. Okay. Here we are this year. And the cultural awareness of others, as you can see in the top there, was 81 last year, 79 this year, so very similar, right? But, but I still wanted to point out that I, that I do believe this is, a, this is a success for us. You know, there's at least some acknowledgement from students that, oh my gosh, I don't actually know as much about other cultures as I believed that I did, right? And so there's, uh, there is a nudge of the needle there, and that's something that we're, that we're proud of, even though it is 2%, right? It is something, and that's what we're working to do. We're pointing our feet in the right direction, and we're baby stepping there. Okay. What we are, uh, what we are quite proud of is is this, right? This is directly measurable from, you know, uh, March of last year up until uh, November of this year when when we did the survey again, and we've taken this new approach towards positionality as well as uh, intersectionality. There's been a nine percent increase in students understanding their own culture. Right. And, and, and that is significant, you know, and I'm very aware, you know, there are cofactors that, that go into this. Um, but I, but I have to say, I think that this is, this is success for us. And I think, I think that the way that we have engaged with our programming has helped with that. Right. So this is just a snapshot of, of, of all of our grades here. Um, so you'll see that uh, what you have to do when you look at the data here is that in 2021, there's the, the light bar behind, but there's the dark bar in front from 2022. Um, so you kind of have to compare, you know, the, the grade nines from 2022 and the grade eight uh, from 2021, right? So you'll see that almost every grade has increased with the exception of two. Um, the grade 11 males are slightly decreased and the grade 12 females are, there's, they're showing a, a significant decrease there. Now, you know, I do want to say um, we are going to look into that, that gap as well, but I know that our grade 12s, historically, very few of them engage in the survey, and that's something we're working on too. So um, there may be another cofactor there. But again, it's information and, and across the board. This isn't, this isn't something where, you know, all of our grade 9s are now experiencing 100% of, uh, of, yes, my own cultural competence is amazing. This is something that shifted the needle across all of our grade 7 to grade 12s. Um, so we're proud of that, again. All this is to say, right, like, the way, the way I framed this presentation when we started, right, is um, this is not the way to do things. It's a way to do things. Um, and, and it says right here, you know, we know that there's still a long way to go. Um, but even in the six months of working on this, from the time we collected this data, there has been growth, you know, and, and that's something we should be proud of. So um, I guess if there's anything to take away from this messaging here is, is we need to know the systems that are happening in our schools. We need to know the programming that we're delivering. We need to be intentional about the way we're doing it. And what's worked at Greenwood may not work at your schools, at your districts. Um, but, you know, like I said before, uh, Terry Fox, right, all we can do is try. Dreams come true when people try, right?